Peace, first pictures of the latest offensive in the Western Desert were taken as General Rommel opened his attack. Since the cameras were turning on them, the fortunes of the day have swung against us, serving to remind any who were apt to forget that we still have a long, hard war ahead of us. dark smudges against the background of smoke are German tanks. Once again, the German commander-in-chief has been able to bring great numbers against our fortified position. We too have made great advances in gun power and tank numbers, but once again we have found ourselves fighting against odds. This is Brigadier General Carroll, whom the Germans claim to have captured. He has been in the thick of the fighting in many of those desert battles. Here's one of our mobile gun crews drawing up to German Mark II and Mark IV tanks, which they had just knocked out. while infantry are digging into slit trenches amid the whine and crack of enemy barrage. <laughs> Commanding the 8th Army is General Ritchie. He has no enviable task, for Rommel is undoubtedly a master of this desert warfare. Our good wishes are with Ritchie in his great fight. A dispatch rider leaves the battle zone for a field transmitting unit. And from this desert radio goes the report of the CNC to Cairo headquarters. In this mammoth building is housed the organization responsible for the staff work of the army in the desert. From here issue the daily and nightly communiques that the world so eagerly awaits. Here's good news. That's General Kruger. He was the Nazi commander of the Africa Corps, and he was captured in the early stages of this new Middle East campaign. It's one of the few times we're really glad to see a German general. Let's hope it's Rommel's turn next. Back in the battle zone, the Royal Air Force have been giving all-out support to the ground forces. Cooperation between land and sky, as there must be in all our campaigns. Now, out with a desert column, we witness the capture of German tank men and infantry. The battle waxes and wanes. In the early days, it was a bewildering whirlpool of thrust and counter-thrust, but all of it was tough. And once again, we have been shown that Hitler's army is still a big proposition. We must never for one moment underestimate the difficulties and hazards of a second front in Europe. We've got to have enormous strength, an inexhaustible flow of supplies and reinforcements. We've got to have everything the enemy has and a very great deal more. Only thus can we wipe this foul scourge of Nazism off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> 